Good evening. So uh, thank you for coming out. Um, thank you, Franklin Park, for having me. Basically, uh, I don't expect to use the a lot of time. I'm just going to read a, a scene that my editor wanted to remove from the novel. <laughs> She, she had a good reason, it's just that I felt as though if I had to remove it, I hadn't done my job elsewhere. And the abiding question for the novel, this is all I'll say, uh, for both the main character, Achilles, and for the reader is, how do you learn to care about people who are unlike you? So I'm just going to read this scene here. Achilles freed the terrier mix first. A scrawny gray dog with greeting card eyes. Next, a tawny pit bull puppy who ran out of its cage and bolted for the terrier, which ran back to her cage. The tawny puppy whined and pranced. The terrier ventured closer. Soon they were playing, skidding all over the linoleum. Achilles opened the cages one by one, hoping for more of the same. But the fighters herded all of the bait dogs. The terrier, whimpering now, hid behind Achilles, and when he turned to look at her, she pissed. An adult blue nose knocked into Achilles, growling, trying to get to the wide-eyed terrier. Achilles pulled the blue nose away from the bait dog and toward the door. The bait dog went back to playing with the tawny puppy. The blue nose slipped out of his grasp a few times, and every time it did, it ran after the bait dog. Finally, the bait dog retreated to its own cage, followed by the tawny puppy. Achilles ran down the blue nose and pulled it toward the door. It was anxious about going outside and kept planting its feet firmly in the carpet. There, there, Achilles petted it between the shoulders. It was a regal, full-chested, bow-legged dog with a lustrous silver-gray coat. Achilles scratched it under the chin and tickled its thin, pointy ears. Each time he grazed the left ear, the dog sneezed and shook his head. When it was calm, Achilles straddled him, its heart knocking against his ribs, and Achilles felt every breath on his thighs. Gripping the scruff of the neck, Achilles yanked him up on hind legs, took one of the razors, and stabbed the blade into the dog's throat. Pinching the blunt end tightly between his finger, his thumb and two fingers, he drew the blade across the throat. It was not as sharp as he would have liked, and he pushed hard to penetrate the hair of his skin, thick as auto upholstery. It was like cutting leather with safety scissors, the line jagged and rough, more hacked than cut. The dog kicked and squirmed loose, knocking the razor out of his hand when Achilles was only half finished. The dog coughed through the wound, hyperventilating, its scrambling feet kicking the razor under the sawhorse as it ran for its cage. Achilles slipped in the blood as he yanked the dog out of the cage by the hind legs, half walking it, half dragging it to the kitchen where the, where the other instruments were. He finished with a straight razor, throat clean open, and ran to the corner and dug its head into the carpet, legs running at full speed like it could push itself through the wall. After half a minute, its legs slowed, then stopped, twitching only occasionally like dogs did when dreaming. Achilles wouldn't have believed so much blood was in a dog or a person if he hadn't already known. The first was the hardest, and he didn't do a good job but he warmed to the task as if someone he didn't know had stepped out of the shadows and taken over while Achilles sat on the counter to take in the view. He selected the largest of the dogs next, a pit Rottweiler mix with short ears, a brown stout snout, and a black brow, dragging it to the kitchen and using his knees to pin it against the cabinets. The dog shook its head wildly as Achilles pushed the blade into its throat and pushed through. It broke loose and ran into the bedroom, hiding between the mattress and the wall. Achilles tackled it. The dog turned over and scratched him. He was strong. Achilles tucked his hand into his arm to protect his face and shoved the scalpel 
into its eye, up to the hilt. Warm urine and blood pooled at his feet and quickly soaked his shoes. It expelled its last breath and its head lolled to the side, the good eye following Achilles. The third was easier than the first. Its skin was thinner. The fourth he barely saw, squatting a little to drop his center of gravity so he could easily work his forearm under the neck, stabbing and cutting simultaneously like slicing a tire. It struggled beneath him, writhing between his legs until the movement was no more than eddies in water, a river that would soon run dry. When it did, he laid it down gently. The fifth he choked with his belt. He heard a noise in the hallway, stepped back and into the shadow of the kitchen, leveled and leveled the rifle at the door before realizing it was only children in a nearby apartment arguing. There was one adult fighter left, and Achilles had just grabbed it when the front door was kicked open in a high-pitched voice yelled, Use the force, Zia. A young boy stood in the threshold, judging by his expression, He'd expected to find someone else in the apartment. He was little, no more than six or seven. He looked at the panting dog at Achilles' feet, at the other dogs scattered around the room like soldiers dropped or shot. The kid might have felt the way Achilles did when they stormed the owl jock stronghold to find it silent, save for the flies, and empty, save for the scores of the corpses scattered in the courtyard like a scourge had run through, like God had delivered some old-time religion, as Jackson put it. That was his saying when someone was dying for a bullet. They were itching for a switching or praying for some old-time religion. Where's Cornelius? asked the kid. I thought I heard shots. He'll be right back. They sick? asked the kid. Their eyes met. A real sick, Achilles nodded. All of them? <coughs> no, Achilles pointed to the fake dogs and the three pit bull puppies, and a dog he hadn't noticed. The same brindle he'd seen the white kid in the hooded sweatshirt walking a few days back. He picked up the tawny puppy and fondled its ears. These ones are okay. In fact, they're going out for a break. You want to help? The boy nodded. This is like a war movie. Right. Do you want to be in it? Can you be my lookout? For ten dollars. <laughs> a rectangular bulge pressed through the kid's front pocket. Are those cigarettes? asked Achilles. One dollar, said the kid. They smoked. The kid taking surprisingly deep drags. Achilles looking at the carnage, wondering if he could add two more bodies to the pile. After stubbing out the cigarette, he opened the bedroom window and gently dropped the remaining dogs outside. When they were finished, he paid the kid an extra $15 for what remained of the cigarettes because kids shouldn't be smoking. The kid thanked him, now I can buy three packs. He considered snatching the money back, but there was no point. He put his backpack into Troy's rucksack and slipped the rucksack onto his back and stepped out the window. Outside, the white kid in the black hoodie chased breathlessly after the dogs. On the way to his car, he passed the same prostitutes he had seen earlier. They straightened up at his approach, walking tall, kicking their legs forward like swimmers leaning against the side of a pool. The fat one had thick lips and a tempting smile an inviting moon face and rich brown skin the color of Naomi's, skin he wanted to lick. Her full and snug breasts sat side by side instead of leaning out for air, but her belly was low and hard, like she was pregnant, too pregnant to fix it. As they passed, the thin one winked. Achilles turned in the trail of their perfume and slipped into a shadowy doorway to watch them. They paraded a few more steps before the thin one looked back and whispered to the pregnant one. They dropped their shoulders, shortening their stride, no longer high-stepping. The one with the belly put her hands on her back, kneading the area around her kidneys. She stepped gingerly. As they turned the corner, she cupped her hands under her belly and whistled. 
she was definitely too pregnant to fix it. Where would that kid end up?